Now, we've talked about 23 and a half hour foreplay, right? If you want to have really good 23 and a half hour foreplay, then speak your partner's language of love. Now we're going to talk about foreplay as in touching. Okay, you all know what Australian foreplay is? That's you awake, mate. <laughs> Irish foreplay, brace yourself, Bridget. <laughs> foreplay once you have kids. Uh, children have a huge effect on people's sex lives. Okay, so this is a question that women often ask me, all right? For Christ's sake, why can't he just hug me without cracking a fat? <laughs> and it's not his fault. It's not his fault. He's not doing anything wrong. Women, let me tell you something. When a man gets an erection, it's the greatest compliment he can possibly pay you. Right? It means that you turn him on. Right? But what's happening is this. Right? Men turn on much faster than women. Jerry Seinfeld put it beautifully. He said, when it comes to sex, right, for men, it's an emergency and they can be ready in three seconds flat. <laughs> All right? They're like firemen. Okay? And he also said, when it comes to women, All right, they're like fire. They need the right conditions to get going. They need time to get going. But once they get going, it's very exciting. <coughs> All right? Now, what we're looking at is the fact that men get turned on really quickly. So if he cuddled you for half an hour, you would probably get turned on too. So there's this difference between male and female sexual response. And if we want to explain why male sexual, dis male sexual arousal looks like this, okay, straight line like this, and this is me getting aroused, it's slower, all right, and Ross is doing all the right things and it's feeling really pleasurable and then suddenly I remember we didn't put the garbage bins out. <laughs> all right, but I'm going to focus. I'm going to focus, all right? I try again, all right, and I'm going, and I'm, this is really good, really good, this is great, and then I look down and my stomach is on the bed beside me. <laughs> all right? Women are distractible in their arousal, all right? So, why are men so undistractable? Because they are cavemen. Although it's 2013, we have caveman and cavewoman sexuality, all right? Now, he is designed to be a sperm donor. That's his only role. He design, he's designed so he can perform in a cave with no privacy, with flood, famine, fire, with ferocious beasts, with marauding neighbours. He's designed so that he can get it up, get it in, get it off and get it out before the <laughs> mammoth comes over the hill and crushes everybody. No? Huh? Huh? And so when he gets aroused really quickly and he's ready to go hours before you are, all right, um, it's not because he's selfish or inconsiderate, it's because of his biology, all right? But our biology, all right, also has an effect on us. So we have this slowed arousal and we're very distractible and sometimes we find it really, really difficult to get turned on, really hard to stay focused, right? And that's because we're baby minders. If we go back to caveman times, okay, let's say that you've got Mr and Mrs Cave Person and they're making love in the cave. And over there in the corner is Junior on a bearskin rug having a little nap. And a saber-toothed tiger comes creeping into the cave and decides to have Junior for breakfast. Who's going to notice first, Mum or Dad? <laughs> Mum, absolutely. Dad's on top, chuffing away like a steam train, <laughs> like this, all right? But you girls, you've always got one ear open, right? Especially there's a baby in the room because I've heard it. You have an incredible, what I call the invisible umbilical cord, right? You're attached to that baby. We're attached to our children. It doesn't matter really how old they are. Um, mine even live in America, both of them, and I'm still attached to them by an umbilical cord. Um, once women have children, they're far more distractible, right? So that's one of the things that happens um, as your relationship matures and you get children. So it's not that men are selfish or inconsiderate, it's just that they're rapidly arousable and undistractable. It's not that women are slow or frigid, right? It's just that they're very distractible and it takes time, which is why women need foreplay. Now, on a good day, 
You may not need much foreplay. You may only need three minutes or five minutes, all right, because you're hot to trot and ready to go, right? But on an average day, you might need 15 or even 20 minutes before you even get anywhere near being excited. And if you're tense or tired, this may take longer. And as you get older, your arousal slows. Now, that doesn't mean that older people don't have sex. Mrs Smith goes to a doctor. And he says, she's 90 years old. Mrs Smith goes to the doctor and the doctor says, Mrs Smith, I've never seen you looking so well. He said, what's your secret? And she said, well, doctor, she said, I have a new boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And he's 19 years old. And the doctor said, oh, my God, you're 90 and he's 19? That's life-threatening. Mrs Smith said, if he dies, he dies. <laughs> OK. So, men and women are different. All right, I hope you're getting the picture. And we're different in the ways that we turn on. All right? Now, a man's genitals are pleasurable 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right? If you fondle a man's genitals, he's going to be appreciative. Right? Right? If I could have a volunteer from the audience. <laughs> now, once my volunteer got over the shock of being molested by a middle-aged grandmother, um, he would like that, all right? Because men love genital stimulation. They want more of it. A lot of guys say to me, I don't get enough genital stimulation. You know, she won't touch me. She doesn't give me oral sex. You know, I really want more genital stimulation. But once a man's genitals become aroused, then the rest of his body turns on, right? So you can always touch a man's genitals and he will like it. Of course, unless, of course, you know, he's... Uh, uh, unless you're... A, yeah, no, I won't even go there. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, so you can see here, men turn on from the genitals outwards, OK? What about women? We turn on from the fingertips and the hair and the toes inward. And our erogenous zones, our breasts, our genitals and our buttocks do not become pleasurable until we are highly aroused. Now, what does that mean in real life? Okay, let's say that I'm standing at the kitchen sink. Well, this is one of the reasons why men are so confused, by the way. I'm standing at the kitchen sink, I'm doing the washing up. And my husband, who knows better than to do this, but let's say he did it. My husband comes up behind me and decides to get a bit amorous and starts to fondle my breasts, OK? This is a question for the women in the audience. Is it going to turn me on or off? Oh. Absolutely. It's unanimous, all right? Knee-jerk reaction. Knee -jerk reaction. <laughs> Absolutely. You mean one of these? <laughs> no, but it's kind of pushing him away like this because it's irritating. It's unpleasant. All right? Sometimes it can even be painful, but it's not pleasurable because women's breasts, genitals and buttocks do not become pleasurable, they do not become erotic until women are quite highly aroused. All right? So the problem is, all right, well, let's just get this here. Women turn on from the fingertips and the hair and the toes inwards. Okay. 